We're itching to uncover Rolex's latest moves, and if you also feel the same thing, then this video is for you. Our track record with guessing Rolex's plans? Let's just say we're usually way off the mark. In this video, we're throwing out a ton of guesses, and with any luck, one might just hit the bullseye. This year's been a mix of home runs and, well, some swings and misses. Now, I'm eager to dive into your thoughts, but I'll kick things off. Remember the Submariner anniversary buzz last year? Rolex pegs 1953 as its birth year, but the internet whispers 1954. What if Rolex bends to the online chatter and shifts it to 1954? If that happens, could we see a titanium version following the Yachtmaster trend, or taking a cue from T, maybe a downsized model, like a sleek 38mm a la Black Bay 58? Exciting possibilities, right? I'm on board with this MGAUS trend, something's always in the work. Last year, I nailed the call that the MGAUS was getting the boot from the team, and voila, it happened. But guess what? This year, it's making a comeback. Cue the confetti. I'm betting on a return with a snazzy purple dial. Forget about turning bezels or fancy tweaks. It's making a comeback as the OG, just like it never left. Lightning secondhand and all, they're not messing with the formula. That's my bold prediction. Now let's talk about the not-so-loved Yachtmaster 2. I've got intel that Rolex has a fresh patent in the mix, a countdown chronograph mechanism. My crystal ball says the Yachtmaster 2 is getting a major facelift potentially becoming Rolex's most complex watch. And can we talk about toning down that huge Yachtmaster 2 on the dial? It's like John Meany bit by writing happy birthday too big. My bet is they'll fix that. As for the Yachtmaster 2's purpose, timing yachts and regattas. Not that I race yachts, but I'm predicting that feature might sail away. I've got a soft spot for the Yachtmaster 42, especially the RLX Titanium version dropped last year, so sleek and stealthy with that matte black bezel. I'm banking on Rolex diving deeper into the titanium game, just like we thought last year. We were expecting a titanium revolution, but it was a bit low-key. Just that Yachtmaster 42 and another piece. Now, my bet is on more titanium action, and the explorers are begging for it. Picture this, a sea dweller in titanium, a heavyweight for serious divers. You've got the Submariner for flaunting, and then the Titanium Sea Dweller for deep sea adventures and fish punching moments. It just makes sense to use Titanium on the heavy duty functional watches like the Explorers and Sea Dwellers, making those substantial cases lighter and more comfortable. Fingers crossed for that move. The Tudor Pelagos is rocking Titanium, so why not the Sea Dweller? And here's a bonus prediction Duo Titanium. A mix of titanium and gold, or as Rolex might call it, ranium. Talking about uncertain dates, the GMT Masters birth year used to be a solid 1954, but now Rolex is throwing around 1955, maybe to dodge the Submariner anniversary spotlight. So no confirmed anniversary plans, but if there is, my guess is a move like Pepsi's bezel switching to sapphire maybe with a clear case back, or a Coke edition for the celebration. Here's the scoop. Rumors are buzzing that the GMT Master 2 Pepsi might face the axe. Why? Well, some owners probably want their pieces to skyrocket in value. Also, have you noticed the Pepsi's red and blue? Not exactly popping. The struggle is real, trying to blend those two colors on a single ceramic bezel. Unlike black, where it's a breeze, so losing the Pepsi might be surprising but kinda expected. It's more like a purpley Dr. Peppery vibe than a true Pepsi, and mark my words, predicting a Coke GMT is as easy as the Milgaus rocking black and red. Just slap on the red, layer the black, and voila, Pepsi out, Coke in. The Yachtmaster, Yachtmaster 2 and even the Sky Dweller seem a bit restless, don't they? I'm sensing a change in the air for the Sky Dweller. Either a breakup or a serious glow up with a dose of perpetual calendar magic. Rolex is itching to flex some watchmaking muscles, and rumor has it they've got a perpetual calendar tucked up their sleeve, ready to grace the Sky Dweller. Word on the street, or should I say leaky patent office, is that Rolex filled a perpetual calendar patent, and the buzz is they're eyeing the Sky Dweller 
as its new home. Picture this, that rotating bezel pulling double duty with calendar functions? Intriguing, right? Imagine the Sky Dweller dwelling accurately every single day of the year. It's like Rolex's version of precision poetry. And here's the kicker, the patent hints at Rolex's trademark ingenuity. The current Saro's annual calendar in the Sky Dweller was a mere six parts away from the standard date mechanism. When Rolex dives into something, they go deep, thinking hard and crafting it in a rugged practical way. Can't wait to see if a moon phase or some celestial touch makes its way into the mix. Rolex sure knows how to keep things economical and neat in their watches, right? I remember the brag about the in-house 4130 chronograph caliber having fewer parts than the El Primero based 430. Classic Rolex move. They've got a knack for efficiency. Now on to the 1908, which made its debut last year, bidding farewell to the Cellini. My hunch is Rolex is taking a page from Cellini's book and giving the 1908 a lunar upgrade. Moon phases are timeless and classy, and the 1908 seems to be begging for one. Surprisingly, it doesn't have it yet, but mark my words, that's changing this year. I'm so confident in this upgrade that I already assumed it had one. A sure bet for sure. Can't wait for that drop. And here's a prediction that's a bit out there. More clip art madness. Remember the emoji and celebration dials on the Oyster Perpetuals? Brace yourself for speech bubbles spelling out positive vibes. Live, laugh, love, joy, and the classic H2H for happy. Rolex hit gold with the emoji trick, and they're ready for round two. Picture this, Rolex unleashing a collection of watches adorned with various sports balls. Tennis, hockey, golf, all in vibrant hues. Now, that's a visual feast. But let's not forget the glorious return of word art, especially the desert reflection style. It's like a nostalgia trip with a rosy tint reminiscing about the word art of our youth. Clown balls, jigsaw puzzles, and a sprinkle of low effort clip art, Rolex take our money. However, in the grand scheme of things, I'm sensing a lean year for new models. Our predictions might just be wishful thinking, as Rolex seems more focused on delivering what they've already promised. A subtle nod to the new factory in the works, gearing up to churn out more Rolexes for everyone to snatch up at the retail price. Future models? Well, maybe it's time to appreciate Rolex for staying the course. Like Grand Theft Auto, quality over quantity. Take your time Rolex, we're ready when you are. Share your thoughts in the comments. What's your take on Rolex's moves this year? That's a wrap folks, a big thanks for hanging out with us at Venti Chic. If you enjoyed the chat, show some love by hitting that like button and dropping a comment below. And of course, smash that subscribe button to stay in the loop for our upcoming videos. Until next time, take care and catch you on our next adventure.